Oh my God. Hold on. Shalom. Shalom, Shalom, everyone. (laughs) God damn it. How are you, everyone? My gosh. Uh, Dave has asked me to come and and do some of the things that I'm hearing that you were a cartoonist. This is with Eric Jensen. You were a cartoonist at High Times Magazine. Does this mean you puff a little bit of the... I I used to back in the day, but you know, I had a, on a serious note, I had a, I had a brain aneurysm at the beginning of the year here in February. Yeah. And so my doctor, and it was pretty serious. I almost died, but my, my, okay. Um, but my, uh, my doctor, uh, my doctor told me I had to cut all the booze out and all the, all the, all the, all the wonderful legal weed now that they have in the city. Unfortunately, the I can't, can't do that. So, so most important question, uh, did you have a Jewish doctor? Because <laughs> I, I believe so. I yes. believe so. Yes. I didn't ask him and he didn't ask me, but, but I, but he was willing to operate on a Buddhist. So I, I was okay. <laughs> Well, you should pay attention because because if it's your stock, you should really listen to them. They know what yes. they're talking about. So yes. if you don't mind, I'm going to include you guys also in talking to Eric Jensen. But we we'll have some questions, friend, and then we can maybe go back to the quiz or I don't even know what the hell's going on. But um, <laughs> David had a thoughts. He's dealing with with furniture. You don't you shouldn't even know from it. Furniture, I'll bet you, made by Goyim. Just say. <laughs> <Just saying. laughs> Literally, I mean, Dave is out there. He's looking at this cabinet that's going back. It says "Made in Vietnam." I'm like, two damaged cabinets. This is, they're getting us back for Da Nang. I'm telling you, that's what this is all about. But you know, Eric, Eric Jensen, welcome, welcome properly to the neighborhood, and shalom to you. So did they? I'm sorry that I missed the early part of the conversation here. How are things going? How what what? When did you know that you had the character down of the art dealer that you play in the collaboration? Was there a moment where it was like, oh, I got it? Uh, actually, I'll, uh, this is weird. Um, this has only happened on a couple of things. It happened when I played Thurman Munson, and it happened a little bit with Lester Bangs, but there's only the third time this has happened to me. Right at the beginning, right at the very first audition, I knew who the guy was. Like, Anthony mm-hmm. McCartan's writing is so good. Um, that I, I, I immediately understood he was. I watched a little video of Bruno Bischoff Burger and uh, to just get the, and I'd met a Swiss guy uh, to get the accent that I met a Swiss guy while I was on vacation earlier this year in Europe. Just took all those elements together and, and, and it, was, it, was, it, was almost, it was almost immediate. I mean, there was, there was a lot to work on in terms of the ins and the outs of how to deal with um, the other actors and stuff like that. Um, but, but in terms of just the basic character, I knew who he was kind of right away. And by the way, I just want to say I'm working, I'm working with, uh, with, uh, with uh, Krista Rodriguez and Paul Bettany and Jeremy Pope. And in my opinion, I'm not the person who runs these things, but I think there are some award worthy performances in this production. I think, uh, I think, I think they're pretty special. I think these are some, I think Jeremy and Paul especially are giving some pretty special performances that people should see. By the way, the, the hardest part of trying to play a Swiss character is not making them cheesy. But you know, <laughs> comedy right there, that's humor. <laughs> I just got that. That took me like 10 seconds. <laughs> Let me ask you also, though, about the, the, the play. I'm sure you were talking about this before. But, but in terms of the exonerated, do you and your, your lovely wife, Jessica Blank, do you get asked like weekly or daily by people sitting on death row, like sequel. I mean, you, you uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I mean, we, we do get a lot of queries about stuff like that. And we, we, you know, the, the death penalty dive was a four or five year journey for us. If you start from the very first interviews to, to uh, the play being up for a couple of years and, and the movie, we, we started to call it the exon and on and honorated. Um, <laughs> But uh, but but, you know, unfortunately, the on and on and on part of the prison industrial complex in America is still uh, 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 alive and and um, and and strong in its own authoritarian way. And and we are are actively always trying to pursue justice with our work. And, um, you know, mostly uh, mostly we get asked when it comes to documentary theater stuff, everybody's got an interesting story. And mostly we get we get hit up by a lot of people who think that their story or their cluster of stories would be an interesting documentary play. And we take all those all those requests very seriously. So I don't know, again, if you were asked this, but but are you and Jessica? Like, uh, may, may I call her Jessica? Yes, absolutely. And yeah. may I call you you? I mean, yeah, you may call me. me. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
EJ, EJ, if you're bored. <laughs> yeah. you, but are you working on specifically another documentary type piece at the moment? Right now, what we're doing is we're doing a few projects. We're making the Lester Bangs movie. Um, we're, um, and then David Simon, who created The Wire, we're creating a, um, a TV show with him. And then Ed Burns, who created The Wire, we're creating a different TV show with him. And then finally, I can't tell you what it is, but we just got a commission from the public theater to write a musical. A musical? Yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be based on historical documents and stuff like that. Not um, as close to interviews as we can get with people who are no longer here. But it's I went I, I was late seeing it um, because we got the tickets right before the pandemic. But um, I, we took my we took our daughter to see Hamilton. And after seeing Hamilton, I just realized what the possibilities of the form were and and um, realized we needed another another challenge. And so we decided to uh, pitch a musical to Oscar Eustace and he said yes. So are you going to be the composer and or how does that work? No. no, 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 we haven't we haven't settled on a composer yet. We're still uh, talking about people and looking for a partner. Well, hey, hey, listen, listen to this, You're just listen to it. Little dim, little dumb. And you can reprise it over and over as necessary. Oh, I've got it. They're wonderful. It works on its own. Thank you very much. I wouldn't want to take that from you. <laughs> so then, let me ask you also, um, yeah, all, all the theater that you do, the collaboration, but also uh, I'm sure what has allowed you to live in a nice little New York apartment there, that I, I believe that's what you're in right now, right? Yeah, yeah, Brooklyn. You, you've been doing Wait. TV. You, you, what do yeah. you, everybody says, oh, they'd rather do theater than TV, but has, has TV been the saving grace of your career that you can afford to write musicals? You can afford to go and do off-Broadway theater in this because, oh, you get to be on Mr. Robot. You, you yeah. get a, a, a thing on, what is it, For Life, and whatever else you're doing for television. Your thoughts? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I mean, I really love TV and, and film as a as an art form. Um, I love the, I love the, um, I love the, the, pardon me, but the collaboration with the crew and, and with the director and the other actors. It's, it's fast, it's low to the ground. Um, you don't have much time to think about the choices that you're making, so you make good, uh, solid choices on the fly. It's very spontaneous, and then you've moved on to new material the next day. It's sort of like being in a jazz quartet, whereas being in a play is like being in a in a classical, uh, a classical music uh, uh, type thing. You know, it's it's um, they're two very different forms, but um, but yeah. But I, I actually will say that the closest thing that I've been to, I've, I'm a big Grateful Dead fan. And the closest thing that I've been in that's been as spontaneous and and um, and uh, with as much back and forth really has been the collaboration. I mean, we're we're really like a we're really like a group of musicians playing off one another. Wow. Well, I, I don't want to. Oh, of course, I always want to monopolize the camera because I'm me. But but <laughs> even I, I interrupted you and Ron when you were talking to Eric. Are there more questions that you would want to ask him too, or do you have any questions, Eric, for him? Because, you know, I'm, I'm always filled with questions. I mean, I'm usually interviewing people, so I think I should probably sit back and keep my mouth, keep my mouth shut. So, but either of you guys want to continue, I, uh, you know, because I came in here and barreled in as I do, but you no, know, you guys are good. So let, let me look at anything. I'll ask some, some other things. Did you have, when you had uh, the Stuttgart, the aneurysm in your brain, yeah. um, did you have a, a moment of sort of your life either flash before your eyes or like, a coming to Jesus or Moshe moment, or, or they're just like, let me just get through this as another test and I'll be out of the hospital. You don't think about life, death, lo leaving life, wow, if you will. Wow. You should have gotten to me then. I was very convertible. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 uh, I had a, I had a, um, well, you know, the, I didn't have any symptoms leading up to it. I, I slurred some words about a week before, and and um, you know, like I said, I'm 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 in uh, I'm in uh, recovery, and and I'd stopped drinking. And my wife said, "Are you drunk?" And I was like, "No, no, never, never." And the, what we'd missed was that my that the the uh, the aneurysm was pressing on my blood vessels, and it was making my my speech slur a little bit. So we missed that. Um, and then, and then it kind of came on me all of a sudden, and and I think the first 
the first, uh, the first, I, I, I did have a, a vision of how I wanted my future to be after I came out of it. First of all, the first thing that I realized was how many friends that I have. So many people showed up at the hospital. Oscar came to the hospital to visit me, um, took time out of his busy schedule to do that. All of the members of the cast came. I had uh, friends from the past casts of Exonerated and of, of our other play Aftermath coming into my house to take care of me and feed me and hang out with me and watch TV while I would ask them over and over again where my wife was. Um, and, and, you know, so first of all, I, I realized how many, how, what a wonderful community we've built here in New York City. And that's, that's, that's my strength. That's where I live, uh, including my wife and my daughter. Um, second, I, I realized that, um, that, you know, it's a cliche, but, you know, there is, I, I'm a Buddhist, so I'm supposed to believe we do this over and over and over again, but, but there is this one life and there is this one moment and maybe I should do something with it. The key moment for me was when we were on vacation in Europe this year, um, I went to see a wonderful production, and I can't remember the director's name right now, in London of The Seagull, starring my friend Indira Varma, who I'd done a TV show with. Oh, she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, she's amazing. And she's like, and she's all sci-fi now. She's doing Dune. She's super cool. Um, but uh, Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones was in the cast. And Amelia, I'm watching this amazing performance in The Seagull, and it dawned on me that Amelia had had two brain aneurysms during, um, during, uh, during uh, Game of Thrones and survived both of them and was now doing this amazing play in, on the West End. And I, I sat there and I watched her beautiful performance and I went, well, shit, if she can do it after going <laughs> much worse than I did, I can do it. And so I called my agents and I asked them to start putting me up for bigger stuff because, because it it was time, but also I didn't want to waste time. Broadway has never been on my bucket list. It's it's um it's never it's never been a it's it was not ever the goal. My goal was never to be famous. My goal was just to express myself with my with my work. And I was fortunate to be able to do that in in acting and directing and writing too. And and I think if I'd really focused on it, maybe it would have come sooner, but it's really nice that it's coming now, especially since, you know, the aneurysm was just in February and, and, uh, and, you know, my life has started over again. This is chapter two. Mit mazel, mit mazel, mit, let, me, let me ask you, uh, you, you, very prominently on your arm is uh, this very colorful tattoo thing. Sure. Oh, good God, yeah. holy shit, look at this well, thing. Yeah. Why would you put this on Whoa, your body? what is it? <laughs> Jessica, is that uh, your daughter's name? What is this? No. Jessica and Sadie. Sadie and Jessica. That's and it's a Magnolia. Okay. My, my daughter's middle name is Magnolia. And then this is, this is a Buddhist tattoo. It's called Mahakala. And Mahakala is roughly uh, uh, the wrathful form of the Buddha, the take the take no shit form of the of the Buddha. And I've got my Buddha on the other side here. Oh, look, oh my, oh, nice so, boobs. Look at that. So wait, 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 why does your Buddha have tits? Well, what's going on with that? that was a, that's been an ongoing conversation with my tattoo artist. <laughs> I was like, can you come oh, okay, so the fatter the Buddha, the bigger the blessing, Rabbi. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The bigger the Buddha, the bigger the blessing, Rabbi. But that's so, okay, you've got this, this frightening Kali thing on one thing, and then you've got the Buddha thing on the other. But I do ask, you're an actor. Active, right yeah and, and perhaps at some point will have been or, or asked to do top nude scenes things like that or, or play characters with short sleeve shirts i mean right. is it do you realize like every if you have getting another show like this eight times a week you've got to just put like pancake over yeah. your why did why would you tattoo yourself a i got an airbrush and and b um b i i, I really <laughs> like i asked myself this question and i said well what if i have to take my shirt off for a roll and then one day i realized I'm not the kind of actor who takes his shirt off. Oh, <laughs> oh. No, well, I got because I have to I'm tell. Not. Dave told me this. He when um, what's his name? Laura Benanti uh -huh. was in Gypsy. Uh huh. This is going back like 10, 15 years. Dave saw Laura Benanti in Gypsy, and there's a wonderful, great actress, a terrific role, all this. And she also takes, you don't really see, but she takes a close to Gypsy Rose uh -huh. Lee. And it's like, what the hell? He, he's looking, she's turned around and he's like, the, on the, and, and, you know, she has a tramp stamp, this woman. And <laughs> you just see the makeup, like, plastered over this thing. And it's like, Gypsy Rosalie in 1950-something would not, or for, well, even 1930-something, would certainly not have had gook all over her back. 
you know, cover <laughs> right. a, you know what God knows what Barbara has on air, there. An airbrush is a better. Vehicle. It must be. I'm, I'm just saying. It just like I don't know. I I don't. I don't get, but, but God bless you. Does, does your wife have any tattoos? Yeah, she's got uh, she's got four or five actually. She's got one on the back of her neck. Um, uh, she has two on her back, where um, uh, based on a book called Hope for the Flowers. I've got one of those here. Um, and you know, it's just it's every time. I mean, this this one I got because my of the birth of my daughter. Um, this one, this one I got after my, uh, after my dad passed away. I mean, they, they, they are external reminders of my internal reality. Um, and, uh, and it's nice. I mean, I've got a be here now tattooed to my wrist, which is, which is, uh, Ram Das. Um, and so I, I, I try to remember that when I'm feeling kind of weird I, or if I'm feeling like insecure, I look down at that and I remember to. I remember to be where I am. See, my, my computer has Ram Dust 2.0. So it's <laughs> that's very funny. I got that one right away. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and I hope your daughter doesn't have any tattoos at that. How old is she? Uh, daughter, no, she's 13. She just she turned 13. We wait. officially got a teenager. A teenager arrived at our house yesterday. Oh. Um, so she's having a big, my, my poor wife, there's going to be 10 girls sleeping over here. <laughs> Upstairs tonight, so I'm gonna like sneak in the bottom part of the house and just stay away from the noise. And... See, I like the idea of ten girls, twenty four years old, sleeping over together. Like, <laughs> oh, hours. This is a very different. <laughs> <laughs> very, very different kind of. What if, what if, is your daughter um, creatively inclined? Do you think she'll go into music, film, painting, acting, or is she like, no, nope, no, nope, mathematics or something? Yeah, no, she wants to go to LaGuardia. She's um she's a uh, she's an arts kid for sure. Uh, Jessica suspects that she's a director in her heart, but there's there's two things going on. I mean, like she had a an her first audition, my manager called her in and said, There's this major franchise that's like and I can't say what it is, and because we signed a bunch of papers and it's auditioning for this kind of character, and we think Sadie might be right. It was a sci-fi thing. And and um, I, I uh, we said, sure, we'll audition Sadie. And she had like four or five callbacks for it. We were getting ready to move to California. And we were like, oh, my God, she's so good already. Um, and then um, this year, in addition to our other work, my wife and I decided to um, write a movie for me and Sadie to do together. Um, so we're going to do a dad and daughter going back to the Midwest movie. Um, uh, uh, and, uh, that's gonna, we're gonna try to film that in August. How do you raise the money for, I mean, a movie, even, even if you're using video, if you're using the cell phone camera thing, it's still, it's, it's thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. I mean, do you do grant funding? Do you just beg? Do you max out your credit card? What the hell do you do to do a full length movie? I mean, whatever it takes, you know, we made the mistake of investing our own money in a couple projects a, a few years back and the projects did fine, but it was a real strain on us. So I think that probably uh, Jessica's the more the producer in the family, but we're going to we're, we're doing some fundraising now. It's a micro budget film. It's like under it's under it's under a half a million dollars. So, you know, I love that micro, but the house I'm in is half a million. Involved. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you know, you do what you can for art. If we got to take out a second mortgage to make the movie, we take out a second mortgage to make the movie. Really? You, you, wow. you trust that it'll hit the festivals and be bought by what? HBO Max or what? Or yeah, uh, I, I guess. I mean, I, I, I don't really like, you know, it's just like the art market. I don't really understand the art, mar art market and how it works. But the but the film and TV market, they're hungry for they're hungry for good, wow. solid movies. And there, there needs to be a place for them and, and there need to be people who make them. And so like, if you can meet those people and they'll pay you for it, it works out. So do you, where do you see yourself in 10 you God willing healthy, of course, with you. Mm, but so do you see more. yourself still doing more, the mix of theater and film? Do you feel, do you feel like stepping more in front of the camera and directing as opposed to Jess or what? Where, where are you at with this? No, I, you know, I like directing movies with Jess, but I really like that she directs our plays. So we've kind of cordoned that off. It makes me happy not to have to, uh, 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 have to deal with, with 10 actors all having crises at the same time. <laughs> um, and, um, I've got the Broadway bug now, so like, you know, I'm hoping I get to work with MTC again. I'm hoping I get to work on Broadway again. Um, uh, that's, that'll be fun. I think in 10 years, I really would like to have, in 10 years, I would have liked to have directed our Lester Bangs movie to some uh, acclaim. And I would really like to, um, I'd like to show run a TV show that I act in. 
this one thing that we're doing with uh, Ed Burns takes place in uh, 1919. It's a period piece and I've written a part for myself in that. So like, you know, I think it's more of a five year plan than a 10 year plan. But you know the 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 twenty year plan is to is to uh, is to is to maybe live in Europe for most of the year. But um, oh, okay. but the five year plan definitely show running. I keep doing the stuff I'm doing. I'm 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 absolutely one hundred percent. Especially after almost dying, I'm really living my dream. Well, Mazel So this is a, a wonderful place for me to almost step away, except for one more question to thank. Eric Jensen, but you, you can stick around. I know you got a met Nate, but you can stay and play the game a little bit. Yeah, I can play the game a little bit. I got to go in about 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, we'll give you one question. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so here's it. <laughs> so, but before I go, I want to thank Eric Jensen. I want to tell everybody that you can go see the collaboration on Broadway as a production by the Manhattan Theater Club at their Samuel J. Friedman Theater on West 47th Street. It's playing through what, mid January? Mid January, yeah. Uh, Mid January. So please, please go see it. We, we've got two real theater critics here who will both say it's wonderful. So you, so you should see it, and I'm, I'm going to go see it as long as it's not Shabbos. Um, <laughs> but Eric Jensen, uh, and it's been so delightful for me to, to talk to you. Let me ask you for people who maybe can't get to New York, can't see you on Broadway right now, if they wanted to go through your IMDb credits mm-hmm. and find the the thing that you're you're like oh you should really see me in that I, I, that I'm very proud of that performance or that particular show and maybe you can go find it on some channel somewhere what would it be it would be uh, playing Thurman Munson opposite John Turturro in the Bronx is Burning uh, it's a, it was a it was a mini series that ESPN put out a few years ago and I I like I said I gained twenty six pounds for it and and got to act opposite Daniel Sundiata as the Reggie Jackson to my Thurman Munson. And, uh, and it was just, it was a group of guys. We all got together. We all got to play baseball together. It was like, I was 12 years old again and I was playing a New York icon and it's, I'm, I, I'm prouder of that than anything I've done so far. Well, you have hit this interview out of the park, especially in terms of, of being able to, to deal with the chaos of, of this stupid show. You should have seen the cable. You should have seen me dealing with the cable box, but it's okay. This is easy <laughs> to figure that. It's like, the man makes half a million dollar movies. It's like, what the, the wire on this fucking thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, don't go away. Don't go away, Eric. Don't go away, Eva. Don't go away. Uh, Dave is coming. Dave, Dave Lefkowitz, he hosts this one. Oh, yeah, he's a nice guy. Yeah, 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 not really. But yeah. tell me, <laughs> a moment, a moment uh, potato is here instead for just to, <laughs> just give it like count. You can even count down. Give a ten second countdown. Amazingly, off Dave will be here. Ten, okay. nine, nine, eight, 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 seven, eight, eight, six, oh, five, oh, eight, eight. Hi, everybody. Oh Hi, God. Eric. Nice to meet you. So so. <laughs> good. <laughs> Come on here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most fun I've had all week. This is great. Uh, <laughs>